Hey there from the Bitcoin SV train, this is John. Tonight I'm going to be talking to Stein Ludwigsen of uh, Bitcoin.no and he's also the co-founding partner, I think that's how you say it, of uh, Kaching.cards. Now Kaching is a uh, an NFC payment system with a hardware wallet built into a smart card. Now I've uh, I've only seen similar things to that. I've never seen it uh, done as well as this. So uh, let's just roll the interview, and you can check out how it all works. Uh, just uh, on a side note, if anyone would like to come on the Bitcoin SV Train Show and uh, just have a general chat, you uh, you're most welcome. Just uh, please let me know, and you don't have to be anyone special. Like uh, in fact. You know, if you're if you're not special, then I'd probably like to hear from you even more because I just I want to hear more about the regular people who are working in Bitcoin SV or even just even just the people who are using it or interested in it. So like if you if if you're interested enough to to be watching this show, if you hang around on Twitter or Twitch or one of those places, uh, then you're you're fine to come on the show. Like. Uh, I'd uh, I'd almost prefer it if some uh, some people came on when they didn't have anything specific to talk about because I think that uh, probably makes for a more interesting conversation. Anyway, uh, drop me a line. I'll uh, give you my address if you're up for that. And let's check out Stein Ludvigsen. See you later. Stein Ludvigsen is joining us today from Norway. Thank you very much, Stein. How's everything over there? Hi, John. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're fine over here. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. Now, uh, you're one of the founding partners with Kaching. Uh, Kaching, as well as being a great sounding name for a product, uh, it's a uh, it's a Bitcoin SV chip card wallet. Is that is that how you would say it in yes. ten words or less? Yeah, smart card uh, wallet. Yes. Yeah. Um, so. Um, yeah, a hardware hardware wallet. Right, on a card. Yeah. Now, uh, before we go any further, like I, I want to say you're you're doing kind of a tour of the different shows at the moment because you're running an Indiegogo campaign to raise funds for uh, for the project. So because statistics show that uh, most people don't watch videos all the way to the end, you uh, get the plug in now so that uh, everyone can see it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, if you want to get your hands on uh, our cards, you can just uh, go to our website, uh, kaching.cards, and uh, there you will find the, the fundraising campaign. Excellent. And it will be, uh, it will cost uh, nine euros or 10 US dollars for uh, one single card. For one single card. Now, do you expect people yeah. to buy one single card or are you expecting people to buy them in bulk? Well, uh, we have options for uh, for everyone. So uh, uh, so far, we have seen a lot of people are actually buying uh, three cards. Really, and uh, but people can also buy a pack of uh, ten cards, or mm-hmm. hundred cards, or a thousand cards. And uh, if you buy a thousand cards, you can uh, you can get your custom design on the cards. Very nice. I'm I'm kind of curious, like uh, who. Who are you aiming this at? Like individuals or companies? You know, companies doing promos. So uh, uh, first of all, this is uh, it's a fundraiser. It's mm-hmm. more than uh, so. But this uh, crowdfunding uh, campaigns are sort of uh, like a shop and sort of like a fundraiser. Yeah, you got to offer um, those like, tier- tiered perks for. Yeah. So, but uh, the most, uh, the first useful thing you can uh, do with these cards, uh, without uh, any, um, yeah, is, is to uh, to just use it as a hardware wallet, like uh, mm-hmm. with a Trezor or a Ledger, uh, where you keep your uh, keys offline, so yeah. nobody can hack uh, hack your computer or phone, mm-hmm. and uh, keep your money safe. So that's like the most basic uh, utility. Yeah. No. But, uh, our vision is uh, a lot more than that. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I want you to tell me all about that in a minute, you know, and including the uh, the lot more too. I uh, I've, I've heard a few of these projects over the years. You know, like people using a, a tap and pay card or an NFC card to, with a Bitcoin mm-hmm. wallet. Um, I 
uh, a couple of years ago, I interviewed, uh, is it Martin Wiesmeyer of uh, General Bytes? And he was working on something like that. He's, uh, his claim to fame was that he actually has a Bitcoin wallet on chips in his hands. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he, I mean, he, he obviously knows how to write his own software. So there, there's, no, there's no app for that that I know of yet. But I know the company was also working on something similar. It was mainly prototype. And I think it, uh, it would rely on some kind of you know, hardware infrastructure for the merchants and also for the, you know, for, the, for the owner as well. So can you just tell me how yours works and what's involved? Yeah, uh, re- I think maybe this uh, where he had the chip in his hand uh, was the project uh, done in uh, the Czech Republic, mm-hmm. uh, I believe. Uh, but that was not a proper solution because if I understood it correctly, you're just it was just a passive uh, NFC tag with a private key. Mm-hmm. So you would give away one single key, a private key, and you would give it away every time you paid. I see, right. Which is a hor- horrible solution, yeah. Especially if it's actually uh, so, inside your body. Yeah, and then people can track you, and uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, it's funny though, and I think you could uh, actually go and buy a beer in there, uh, yeah. cantina in uh, the Czech Republic in Prague, and uh, yeah, and use this. But you are just basically giving away your private key. Our um, our technological breakthrough was when we managed to um, to generate a new key pair mm-hmm. in a short amount of time, because uh, that's the hard part. Uh, it's not that difficult to have a, a smart card um, signing a transaction, mm-hmm. because you have some native uh, cryptographic functions built into the card. Yeah. From. Uh, it's, uh, these cards are designed by uh, Visa and MasterCard to fulfill their uh, needs, but uh, they have uh, some cryptographic uh, functionality that you can use in different ways. Right. So uh, to sign a Bitcoin transaction is very fast, uh, but uh, the difficult part is to generate a new key pair. Yeah. And uh, we managed to, uh, to do this and uh, to uh, sign a transaction in 1.3 seconds. Mm-hmm. And when we were able to do that, we understood that ah, okay, this is a useful. Pro- this can be a useful product. Yeah, I saw the demo that you posted on Twitter, and it looked pretty nice. I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> so it uh, it works in tandem with a smartphone app, if I'm uh, if I'm correct. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So uh, in the future, we uh, I, I said that the first basic uh, utility is just as a. Uh, uh, hardware uh, wallet for uh, storing or hodling <laughs> and uh, easy but to ac- ac- access your funds easy yeah. more easy than the paper wallet uh-huh. uh, but uh, in the future we see this as a, a payment tool mm-hmm. and um, so you pay in uh, at point of sale uh, terminals and in the shop and uh, to other phones and uh, stuff like that right. Um, and now what you do is uh, you manage the card with your phone. Yep. So you can, uh, let's say you want, uh, uh, yeah, spend. you have a spending limit and uh, that requires a PIN code. You can set, uh, okay, I can spend uh, Bitcoin for uh, $500 or $50 and then I uh, will, uh, then uh, you have to, the user have to, uh, enter a pin code and then you can customize how long pin code you want and uh, so forth normally for numbers so so, uh, sounds like so, most so this is like the administration of the card uh, mm-hmm. but also it uh, it will track every uh, all the use so if you're in the shop and pay something with your card yeah. uh, you will get a uh, notification on your phone you just spent this amount of money and uh, we also want to build in uh, like digital receipts so you get the receipt from the purchase uh, also on your phone mm-hmm. and uh, yeah so it sounds like so it's also a kind of a audit mechanism yeah most of the most of the magic is happening you know in the app is that right not uh, what does the what's actually stored on the card 
No, it's uh, no. I disagree. Uh, the 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 phone the app phone app is just uh, passively tracking the card. The magic mm-hmm. happens in the card. Really, the okay. keys are inside the card. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the signing and everything is in the card. And if you mm-hmm. let's say you turn your take out the battery of your phone, your card will will still work. Right. Okay. So uh, yeah, so it's independent oh, cool. of the I've never seen anything of, like that. Of, of the phone. And uh, also, it doesn't need a server or anything. Uh, all you need is a card and uh, and Bitcoin. Right, right. So, I mean, uh, how much how much memory do those card chips actually have? Because um, I was always under the impression that they only stored like a, a short string of characters, and you know, you would use that string to unlock something else. Yeah, but it's not. It's a computer. <laughs> it's a full fledged computer. Uh, right. But uh, it does, doesn't have a, it runs on the electricity generated in the NFC field. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, but it, it's a computer. And uh, mm-hmm. so you can store data and do calculations. And, right. uh, it actually has uh, software like running on the chip. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so it, it's it's a wallet. It's a proper mm-hmm. wallet. It's not just a signing device or uh, something like that. It's uh, it's a wallet, and mm-hmm. <clears throat> we are also going to um, uh, make it um, work with uh, tokenized tokens. Yeah. So um, you can uh, <coughs> have uh, many tokens at the same card. Mm-hmm. That's very cool too. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can, uh, I think uh, one of the best use cases or one big use case is uh, actually uh, e-money mm-hmm. built on uh, tokenized. So um, uh, like uh, take a euro, if, if a private company makes a euro, a tokenized euro, yeah. uh, you can use it uh, on the card. Excellent. And uh, but. But also for uh, like it can be uh, like uh, bus tickets, mm-hmm. you know. So you go to yeah. the bus and just ping, and uh, or uh, cinema movie tickets or uh, anything, actually. Or even maybe a, an ID system that's based on the blockchain someday. You that is use. possible too. Yeah. Right. Right. So you can uh, yeah reference any ID information. And you can in do this. all this on on one card. You don't need to carry around you know ten of them. Exactly. I, I'm sure you have uh, like four or five uh, plastic card in your wallet right yeah, now. At least. Uh, yeah. So you have loyalty points for the hotel and uh, yeah, all these cards. And uh, this makes it possible to have just one card for everything. That's very cool. I would quite happily replace my entire wallet with one card. Although uh, I'm a little bit scared about uh, how often I would lose that. Yeah, if you lose it, it's uh, no problem, actually. Um, if you lose your phone and your card, uh, you can still recover absolutely everything. All your tokens, mm-hmm. everything, you can uh, recover with a 12-word seed right. that you have to write down and mm-hmm. store somewhere safe. And uh, we will also, uh, like, um, we will store encrypted uh, everything on Metanet. Mm-hmm. Uh, all, uh, so... Uh, Let's say in your app, if you have uh, some preferences or a contact list or something, uh, everything will be, uh, or like your pin code, everything can be stored uh, encrypted on uh, Metanet. So we don't have to run a server. You just, uh, yeah, everything can be restored uh, easily. <laughs> One day everything will be on the Metanet. So yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's not much data, and uh, why not? So we thought, why not just store it uh, there? Yeah, sure. It's so what um, so. what's required on the on the merchant side. So like, if if I if I had a shop or a restaurant and I wanted to accept Bitcoin via you know, these cards, do I need any special hardware or infrastructure, or do I just need the app or what? <laughs> Well, our uh, our uh, strategy forward is to uh, to work with the uh, payment service providers. Mm-hmm. So uh, the uh, the shop will not uh, have to do anything. Maybe uh, it's it's uh, all uh, uh, done with a service provider. 
Excellent. So uh, we will develop um, software, special software for uh, Ingenic, for Ingenico and Verifone and this this uh, hardware point of sale, uh, popular hardware point of sale solutions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and make it easy for uh, service providers to integrate our systems. So yeah. this way we can make, uh, if we make a deal with uh, one or two uh, big uh, service providers in the country, you uh, uh, you basically have uh, most of the point of sales in the country. That would definitely help so. with uh, you know, take up as well because I think a lot of merchants who were Bitcoin friendly, they're they're a little bit burned by that whole coin kite uh, thing that happened a few years ago. Everyone had these special terminals and they they bought them and they looked after them, but yeah. then the company just shut down. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, we have seen this in Bitcoin for so long. People trying to convince like uh, one shop to to have a, a tablet or some special point of sale that will be used twice a year. <laughs> And uh, so the, the owner, they forget how it works. And uh, mm-hmm. I think also BitPain run, in, run into this problem uh, early on. Yeah. That's and right. um, so uh, we, we are going straight into the, the hardware they are uh, using today. And uh, the person in the, the cashier will not notice anything. They will just see a card and the payment go through. So uh, And it's a lot more uh, efficient than to convince each uh, shop owner yeah you go to a payment service provider who has uh, thousands of uh, customers sold right there yeah 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 i think um, the thing i hear most when i uh, when i try to pay with bitcoin at some establishment is like uh the, the guy who knows about that isn't working today so do you have any cash yeah you know, like, exactly uh, <laughs> yeah <no. laughs> yeah i've, I've uh, had that experience too <laughs> several times well, it's also, usually the owner who has an app on his phone, you know. Yeah, or the, it's like the owner's, the owner of the the owner's son or something like that who just who knows about Bitcoin, but he's only in there once a week. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and uh, you need a conversion, automatically conversion to shops. Uh, so they just get fiat money mm-hmm. like, they are, like they're used to. So how much can so, how come how much can you reveal about the the technical side of it, or is that like a uh, you know like commercial in confidence? Well, uh, the uh, no, uh, did you say how much I can reveal about? Can you reveal about the the technical side of it? You know, like how how your security model and you know how it's how it's designed, that kind of thing. Yeah, or is that it's uh, it's very yeah uh, we have uh, everything is open. Uh, the protocol is uh, because we are very aware of this uh, the network effect. So we cannot be the only one uh, using the the only company using the Kaching protocol. Our goal is to have uh, lots of other companies using uh, our protocol and uh, for free, not even paying us to use it. Yeah. Uh, but you want uh, the card to work if you're. Uh, in Australia, and you travel to uh, Japan, you want it to work there. So uh, it's it has to be bigger. The protocol is bigger than the company. Yeah, I mean um, that, that's another problem. So uh, we, we so we have uh, documented uh, the protocol very mm-hmm. specific uh, on our website. Um, we have a license uh, which is uh, a tweak of the Open BSV license. Uh, so uh, it means every, everyone can use it uh, for free uh, as long as they use it on uh, Bitcoin SV chain, of course. So of course. Not to Bitcoin Cash or BTC or any of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we will also make libraries for mm-hmm. uh, phones and uh, terminals, so um, computer libraries, so it's easy for people to integrate uh, into their software. Right. So. Uh, if you're if you're going to let people use this for free, what's your what's your revenue model? So uh, we are, what we are not giving away for free is like the code on the card, right? Uh, and that's where we have an edge uh, compared to other people because it's it's very difficult actually to generate addresses and do it in a timely fashion. Yeah. So yeah, that will be our uh, edge. Right, so, and that's that's the part you yeah. can't reveal. Yeah. All right. That's yeah, good. I'm not giving away that code. Code. Uh, 
Fair enough. But there, there is code on the card that generates a new key pair with every transaction. I think that that's definitely the first yeah. time I've heard of that happening. I mean, it's quite likely that it... Well, maybe not likely. Someone's done it before. This could be a world first. Is it? Yeah, I think it's a world first. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Actually, um, I haven't... Uh, I think uh, you have um, some other projects before, but it's always been with the static uh, keys. Yeah. So just one key pair and... Yeah. So this is... Uh, it's the first and it... Uh, yeah. But anyone can... Uh, is of, of course, welcome to compete with us and try to do the same. Sure, yeah, of course, if if they can. Yeah. How many people have you got on your yeah. team there? How many people we have on your in... team? Well, no, uh, yeah, we're uh, two people doing most of the work. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. How long has it taken you to uh, to get all this ready? Uh, it's uh, we have uh, we started the company in February last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, but uh, we have spent a lot of time on funding and stuff like that, and uh, it takes a lot of time. So uh, uh, we're happy that we uh, are doing this crowdfunding now, so we can move forward instead of just go around and ask for money because that's not what we want to do <laughs> we want to build and make this uh make the business so what what made you decide to go down the the crowdfunding route did that just sound uh, uh basically better than basically the... uh impatience yeah uh with uh because it takes a lot of time to work with uh, venture capitalists and uh so uh so we wanted to just get started on the real deal <laughs> and uh, this makes it um, possible for us uh, if we uh, can uh, if we reach the goal of this campaign mm -hmm. and uh, we are on the right track i think to do that cool have you ever done hardware mass production before we are not uh, doing the hardware mass production. Right, that's the, the uh, cards. We are can... just programming mm -hmm. the cards. So we have a, a Chinese supplier that is uh, has done this for many, many years. And uh, they are top notch. And I, I met them in Hong Kong last year, actually. Right. So, uh, so they produce the hardware and uh, we do the programming. And uh, the hardware is, is exactly the same as uh, Visa and MasterCard use. We just have a different software inside. Yeah, yeah. I'm, that's the part that amazes me most. I think that these things have advanced a lot since the last time I was reading about them because uh, I, I didn't realize they actually stored enough new data to, to actually run run an app or you know run any kind of calculation at yeah. all. Yeah. And uh, you can even have... Um, yeah. You can even have uh, um, multiple apps on mm. one card. Yeah. So in uh, in theory uh, or technically, it's possible to have a, a bank can uh, issue a card, mm -hmm. and it can have a Visa, the Visa app on it, yeah. and also Kaching. Wow. Uh, so so you get both on the same card. I I don't know if I can see Visa going for that just yet, but uh, you know I got my fingers crossed that they'll they'll see the light someday. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, it's not like uh, black and white here. Right? Yeah. It's um, the banks are issuing the cards. These are they are not the card issuer. Mm -hmm. yeah, so right. it's it's a system, and uh, so Visa is also dependent on uh, its partners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So there's, there's lots of we'll see, but uh, I, I expect some friction, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll deal with that when the time comes. How, how's the yeah. response been on Indiegogo so far? Is it uh, it's doing pretty well? Yes, it's been uh, fantastic, and uh, I think I counted the numbers. I think it was uh, uh, 20, 29 countries. People from twenty nine different countries have uh, ordered uh, cards from us. Nice. I so don't want we are seventy seven percent of our goal. Seventy seven already yeah so but i'm not uh I, I don't relax until we get the last uh percents uh, right 20 23 percents yeah 
So th- this is uh, this is recorded. I mean, the campaign's still live while we're recording it and when we release this video. But chances are, someone may watch this in a year's time to to see it. But uh, I'll make sure the website and everything is there anyway, just in case. Uh, can you give the date when the the crowdfunder expires? Just so I could. Yeah, that's uh, New Year's Eve. New Year's or the Eve. day before New Year's Eve. So we have uh, like forty about forty days left right, to get the last third. 23 percent yeah okay cool and that's about 30th of december 2019 this is this is for your future future viewers here so uh yeah if you're watching this in the future you'll be able to go uh go to kaching dot kaching dot cards and check yeah. and uh, see how far they progress since then and if uh, if you're watching this before december 30 2019 definitely go to indiegogo and check it out so um you uh, you've been you've been on the Bitcoin scene for a long time in Norway. That's right, isn't it? Yes, I've been uh, running Oslo Bitcoin Meetup yeah. for many years. So it was a very similar situation to Tokyo, right? It was first it was the Bitcoin Meetup, then it was the Bitcoin Cash Meetup, and uh, do you have a, a separate meetup yeah. for BSV at the moment? Yeah, we have a. Uh, it's it's just called Oslo Bitcoin Meetup. Mm-hmm. Uh, we changed it, or I changed it to Oslo Bitcoin Cash Meetup for mm-hmm. uh, a year <laughs> until the split, and then I uh, renamed it back to Oslo Bitcoin Meetup, but have a SV in the logo. So right. uh, yeah, the meetup is has been tracking uh, the correct Bitcoin all the time. <laughs> it sure has. Yeah, we we haven't quite managed to get a uh, you know, specific Bitcoin SV meetup here in Tokyo yet. We we've got a few determined members, but it's never quite enough for a, a gathering at the moment. Yeah, you have a uh, Ken Shishido. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's he's the man. Yeah. He uh, he was co-founder of uh, all of those meetups. So sinister yeah. to reason. And what's your what's your background? Like, how did you get into all of this in the first place? Yeah, I've been. Uh... To say I, I, I have a uh, my education is physics, but I've been working in media and with uh, computer development, and uh, so yeah, kind of a mixed, uh, very mixed uh, career. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I uh, fell in love with Bitcoin, and I want to work with that. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, do you? Um, I mean, I've. I'm, this is my guilty confession here. I've never been to Europe, uh, so I've never been to Norway. I, I don't know what's it uh, what's it like over there with Bitcoin adoption, Bitcoin acceptance. Uh, I, I know cashless is a big thing over in Scandinavia, particularly. Yeah, are people more open to Bitcoin there uh, compared to Australia? I don't know. Uh, I think uh, Australia is like uh, no Japan. I, yeah. I don't actually live in yeah. Australia. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it is. Uh, it you don't see cash uh, often in Norway anymore. Mm-hmm. Physical cash. Uh, everybody uses cards and. Uh, right. So. Um, but uh, the Bitcoin uh, scene, I think, is pretty average for Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, you have uh, enthusiasts, but it's not mainstream. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're still very early. <laughs> so it's very, very much the same as everywhere else. Yeah, I mean, here in Japan, we have we have department stores that accept Bitcoin, and they have signs up all around the place saying "We accept Bitcoin." And then you walk up to the cashier and you say, "I'd like to pay with Bitcoin," and they're like, "What's that?" Yeah. So yeah, I don't <laughs> exactly. Know. It's yeah, big camera. No, what's it called? Uh, this. Uh, yeah, I've been there and uh, asked them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, Bitcoin? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this guy knows about Bitcoin. And like, it's, it's and that was PTC, of world. course. It wasn't Bitcoin. <laughs> right. Of, of course. Yes. So, yeah. No, so our uh, our goal is, uh, like I said, uh, to integrate it in uh, into the existing uh, point of sale systems and not mm-hmm. create separate systems. Yeah, because I imagine you know if your if your country is like a really cashless one like Norway, then I mean, a, a lot of that infrastructure is going to be there for people to use. Whereas if it's something like say Thailand or uh, or you know somewhere in Africa, maybe the infrastructure is not readily available. 
yeah but they have phones yeah, so yeah. you can use phones as a terminal mm-hmm. as well so uh, right so you, know, yeah, uh, you can anyone yeah. can use it yeah this sound this sounds very promising i i really hope it works well and you know since since the world seems to be heading towards cashless i would rather that be cashless or you know card payments with bitcoin rather than with the country's fiat currency i you know, yeah I and bitcoin is cash tech. Yeah. It's a peer-to-peer electronic cash system. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing that terrifies me most is, like, not using cards. It's just the the fact that uh, that if if the the national fiat currency is based, you know, is cashless, then uh, then one day, you know, I could be totally shut out of my account for whatever reason someone decided, whereas that's less, like, yeah. less likely to happen or totally impossible with Bitcoin. So, yeah, I'm going to... Yeah keep promoting that yeah absolutely i'm uh, i'm pro cash i don't want it to uh, to disappear because uh, yeah like uh, just in norway now we have uh, i think one or two years ago we had new rules which allows the bank to do uh, so called the bail in not bail out but bail in and that is uh, when the bank goes bankrupt uh, it can steal the customer's money <laughs> Nice. And that was introduced in Norway, first in the EU and one year or two years later in Norway. And nobody's talking about it. No. So, uh, and I think it's a horrible uh, idea. I don't know. If... The bank can just take the money like they did in Cyprus. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if people just, they, they think it's not going to happen they, in they their They called country. it something nice. Of course. They, they, in Cyprus, they called it something nice. They said, that we'll give you a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so to get a haircut is nice, but uh, people taking your money is not nice. <laughs> Even the word bail in just sounds very euphemistic to me too. It's just... Yeah. Maybe they should call it a uh, customer crowdfund. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, this is this is your national bank. We're doing a we're doing a crowdfund. And uh, by the way, you you have to you have to contribute. But yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we're we're seeing people being shut out of shut out of PayPal, being disconnected from Visa, people getting kicked off, you know, social media and other platforms, even you know, even Airbnb. You know, when their behavior has got nothing to do with the service they offer too. So, uh, you if if that's going to happen en masse, then yeah, I don't want anyone doing that with my bank account too. I want some alternative at least. Yeah. And it's you can be even if you do something legal, you can still be shut out of the banking system. Oh, yeah. That's a big problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone just may not yeah. may not like you for some reason, and uh, they've got a friend who works there, or you know, or any other legitimate reason, so-called legitimate reason. Yeah, it's very very scary thought. Mm. But anyway, you represent the not scary side of that. Which is yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm expressing People my fear. Have their own. Yeah, my fear is with the banking system as it exists today, not with uh, not with NFC cards. I love NFC cards. I uh, have quite a few of them here, and I like to play with them as well. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, Stein. Well, uh, yeah. is there is there somewhere like people can find more about you as well? Like just uh, hear your thoughts on Twitter, Twitch, something. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, uh, they can go to uh, should go to our website, coaching mm-hmm. cards, and uh, look at uh, things there. And uh, on Twitter, I'm I'm just I think you can just search uh, Stein Ludvigsen. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure what my Twitter handle is. <laughs> oh, really? But, uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'll try to so, I'll try to track you down. And I'll uh, throw that up on the screen later too. Yeah. Alrighty then. Well, thanks a lot, Stein, and uh, good luck with the campaign. Thank you very much, John. Come back and speak to okay. me in like uh, a couple of years, and I, I want to. I'm quite interested in this project. I want to find out how it all turned out. Yeah, hopefully in a few years it will be a big financial institution. Nice. Think of me when you're rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Thanks a lot, man. I'll see you later. Okay. See you.